yourself for healing. I personally, from what I see in the Word of God, do not believe that it is God's will for any of us to die early and to die sick from a disease or to commit suicide from a mental disease or broken heart or feeling that we've been abandoned or that God has somehow overlooked us. It's not, um, it's just not God's will according to this book. How can I know what God's will is? Because I read this book enough to know what God's will is. Now, that's the first thing I want to talk to you about, positioning yourself. We talked yesterday about growing up. That's a good position to get in if you want to be healed. There are um, many, many things that you're going to find here as you start reading this book from cover to cover to cover to cover. Oh, but sister, the Old Testament, that's the Old Covenant. I live in the New Covenant, so why do I need to read the Old Testament? Find out. Jesus is from the first page to the last page. This is where you get to know him. In our Lord and Savior's ministry, he referred to the Old Testament and to the prophets and to the laws of Moses. That's what he preached. That's what he preached. He was a fulfillment of that. All right? The word became flesh and dwelt among us. So I want to talk to you a little bit about this, about my personal testimony. And um, I, I do want to say something to you. Whatever I say, um, I could say this. I understand I've made progress, and I know a lot of you have. In, and we should. The Word of God says we should go from glory to glory to glory to glory. And this is what's going to help you do that. So um, about 15 years ago, when I became discouraged and walked through the house, deciding that that was going to be my last day on earth, and decided that I was going to do that by taking my husband's pills. Because I knew what they did to him. So I knew if I took enough of them that I would not be alive after a few hours after taking those pills. The main difference between that woman those years ago and this woman today. Oh, I loved Jesus then. I thought because I had known Jesus for years and years and years since I was a little girl. I thought I was mature. I thought I just had messed up and didn't want to be here anymore, and I just wanted to be with Jesus and give up on this thing of trying. Didn't want to try anymore, just tired of it. It seemed that all the circumstances around me were such a mess, they could not be fixed. Well, the main difference in that woman and that train of thought those years ago and the lady that you see standing before you today is that I'm reading my Bible every day. Every day. A lot of it. For me, a lot of it. I'm sure the Lord's going to increase that as time goes on. But I'm reading an hour a day. In that hour a day, I read about 100 pages a day. The only way I can personally do that, because I've always been a slow reader, uh, I'm not much of a slow reader now, but it's because of this method of the Bible. And I'm going to take a few minutes and talk to you about that because it's time for us to grow up. And it's time for us to get all of the Lord, all of the knowledge of Him. It's time for us to grow on our relationship with Him. And do you remember how Pastor talked to us on Sunday night? and told us that for Abraham's moment, it was time for him to come after God and for him 
instead of God baby, baby feeding him and force feeding him all the time and God showing all the time just as an immature person. See, we can live on the grace of God. It can be a good Christian life. But why not live by faith? Why not grow up? Why not read your Bible every day? Listen, he is waiting for you to grow up. Now, let's go back to this, this method. I, about five years ago, I was exposed to a choice of looking at this Bible. It's called Quick Scan with a K, and it's a very unique method of printing. Some of the words are bolded. So when you just read the bolded words, you are speed reading. It just makes you speed read. It's a very, very simple method. Now, any college professor will tell you that when you speed read, you retain more. Actually, 34.8% more, according to Tess. When I heard that, can I read the Bible and retain over one-third more if I use a particular method of printing? So I got one, and I started using it. And I started testing their marketing, because the way this Bible, and when I say marketing, uh, that's, I'm just saying the facts. In the front of this Bible, it says um, how many words are in this Bible, in the King James Bible, and if you read it with the quick scan method, if you read 250 words a minute, that you can really read this Bible in about 35 hours. From cover to cover, yes, King James from cover to cover. I'm reading it now because I've been using it for five years and I'm reading a little faster than that. I'm reading 100 pages a day and one hour a day. Therefore, I read through the Bible every 18 to 20 days. You know what? If I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. That's why I'm telling you that. It was my choice to get out of that ditch of not reading my Bible every day and to taking hold of something that was presented to me. And I'm telling you, I've taken hold of it. I'm not going to let go. And I'm pretty certain that before this thing's over, before the rapture, if it doesn't happen tonight or tomorrow, which, oh, well, if it does, we're all, we're all, we're all going, right? But I'm pretty sure that that will be increased. Now, let me say this to you again. If I can do it, you can do it. I, I want you to email me. I want you to go to my website and email me and say, I'm doing it too. I'm going to read, read, read. And you know all that says to me is I love him. I realize that the word became flesh. And I want to spend time with him. I want to say, Jesus, I love you. I was talking to my daughter yesterday about this about reading. She's reading 100 pages a day, too. And actually, God told her to do that before he told me to do it. And, and it helped me. And I, in the name of the Lord, this is going to help you. If I can do this, you can do it. Do half of it. Do a quarter of it. It'll be more than what you're doing right now. And see, it's so easy. You just scan. Just You're just speed reading. To me, I am grateful for the person that came up with this method of printing. I am very, very grateful for this. So Holly said to me, my daughter, yesterday, she said, Mama, for me, it goes a step beyond reading. And I ask the Lord that it does for you too. That it's not just reading. If you get to 100 pages a day, if you get to 200 pages a day or more, it's not just that. It's getting to know him. It's saying, Jesus, all that other stuff that I put first when I wasn't reading my Bible every day, when I said I didn't have time for it. Now, I'm telling you, when you start getting this train of thought, you're putting yourself in position to get healed. Because when you get close to him, you'll get healed. Just get close. Just get close enough. And I really needed to tell you about this. It's, this is, I don't know. I mean, it would be very hard for me if somebody took this method of printing away from me. I love it. And I used to say, 
from my personality. No, I'm talking to you. This is a class, and I, I feel commissioned not just from your pastor and this church, but from the Lord to tell you how to get into a position to receive your healing. Now, for that, I used to say, oh, well, for my personality, this fits. This fits any personality to get to, to be able to read more of his word, to be able to retain 34.8% more in your heart. I think that's just huge. I know it is. Well, that will get you in position. Now, that is not just an opinion. I'm going to take it to the word now and show you. Now, um, before we go there, let me uh, just present to you the little story of my attempt to cross over to the other side and leave this world. I had been married previously to this marriage that I'm talking to you about where I tried to commit suicide. I went through the house. I took every pill that he was taking and I took them methodically knowing that I would fall asleep first and then the heart pills would go to work after I fell asleep. I wasn't trying to cause pain to my body because I didn't want to hurt myself. I just wanted to go to heaven. I remember the lady in the hospital when they, the ambulance took me to the hospital with a paper. She had a tablet in her hand and she was taking notes what I said as I was coming to. And she said, how many other times have you tried to hurt yourself? Well, I was a little out of it at that point because the pills had taken effect and I said, I didn't try to hurt myself. I tried to go be with Jesus. Well, you know, then they're calling the psychiatrist in and everything. All that process didn't really take that long, except just, you know, 24, 48 hours. The main issue was, I'm telling you what, depression, staying away from the word of God, putting yourself in a position to receive from the enemy, now, that's actually, there are two positions in this world. There's two. You either position yourself by how well you know this book and how you treat this book. You treat this book and you love this book the very same way you feel about God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. If this is not the most important thing, and you're in a day in your life or a time in your life when you're like, I don't know why I can't get healed. Why won't God heal me? If you'll read, every answer is here. It puts you in position. And it, it clears things up like unforgiveness. It clears things up about judgmental attitudes. There's, everything's here. Everything's here. The thing I love about this method of printing and that I'm so adamant about for someone to try this method of printing, just try it, is that it gets more of the word in your heart, it increases your understanding, and this is where your answer's at. Now, the enemy wants to trick you out of reading this book by making you think, whoa, I don't understand King James. Well, you know, the way technology is, you could get any version. There's hundreds of versions of the Bible. So that's no excuse for staying out of position with the Word of God. The other issue is that the enemy would say to you, look how big that is. How are you ever? And some of it's boring. No. No, it's not. That, those words are from the dark side, I promise you. It's not. You start reading from cover to cover this book, and you will see that it will increase your love for him. I ask him, <clears throat> let me know you, Lord. Let me get to know you. Let me fall in love with you more. You know, those of you that have been romantically in love, 
You just want to spend time with that person. That's all you want to talk about. Here you are. Get in position. Get in position. Just get to know him. Get to know him. <clears throat> Let's read a little bit. Nehemiah chapter 8. The nation of Israel had not seen or heard the word of God in a long time. They found the books. And chapter 8, here it goes. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday before the men and women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive. Did you get that? From morning until midday. That's about six hours. It could have been nine hours. And all the people were attentive. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could find a congregation in the United States today that would stand with their children and listen to the Bible and be attentive for either six or nine hours? What's wrong with us? We need to get in position. Let's turn, um, let's turn the page and look at the next chapter, chapter 9 in Nehemiah, verse 3. And they stood up. Now, this is days later. And they stood up in their place. This is weeks later, actually. And they stood up in their place and read in the book of the law, of the Lord their God one fourth part of the day and another fourth part of the day they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God then stood up on the stairs of the Levites Jeshua and Bani and Kadmiel Shebaniah Buni Sherebiah Bani and Shenanai and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God then the Levites Jeshua Kadmiel Bani Hashabniah Sherebiah Hodijah Shinabiah and Bethanahiah said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God forever and ever. And blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Do you see that they're reading the book one fourth of the day, then they're confessing and repenting, and another fourth of the day? These people are really getting it. It's time to grow up and get in position. It's time to grow up. So many things are so much more important. I understand. I raised five children. I understand you've got housework, you've got wash to do. But I promise you, if you put this first, make gentle changes in your life. Don't try an hour a day to start with. God gave us good sense gave us common sense start with 15 minutes a day and do that for a little while so that you can be faithful to it that's the most wonderful thing about Christianity when you fall when you stop doing what you promised God he loves you so much that he can just say come on get up try it again come on let's go again you can do this get on up Brush your little self off and go at it again. The enemy would condemn you and he would keep you out of position. He would make, well, you couldn't do that. LaDonna could read like that and so could your brothers and sisters in the church that signed up for that. But you could not do that. Yes, you can. If I can do it, you can do it. I promise you. And look at these people thousands of years ago. The same thing I'm talking about. 
it puts you in position. Now, um, I want to go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. And, and we're going to see another place of putting ourselves in position to receive our healing. Now, this is a story of Jehoshaphat. He had some enemies of Israel come against him. They were so big in relationship to Israel. I'm telling you, it was a serious situation. So he gathered all the women and children, and they called a fast and prayer. And this is what Jehoshaphat the king at that time said to God on behalf of the people. He said, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. You see, when you get your eyes on him, now that's what I'm talking about in reading your word. Get your eyes on him. When you get your eyes on him, things are going to change. It was just a bit after Jehoshaphat said, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. That a word from the Lord came, and this is what the word of the Lord said. And he said, hearken ye all Judah. And that this is going to be verse 15 of Second Chronicles chapter 20. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude. For the battle's not yours, but it's God's. When you get your eyes on the Lord, things are going to change. But do you see here there's a condition? Here's another clue to getting yourself in position. Get your eyes on him, number one. Number two, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. Now you know um, what a great teacher on fear not your pastor is. But that's a position that you need to get in. Fear not. Be not dismayed. Yesterday I brought the, the fact up that Oral Roberts used to say that that uh, phrase, fear not, let not your heart be troubled, phrases like that are in the word of God 365 times. One for every day of the year. The Lord does not want you to be in a position where you're afraid or dismayed or your heart is troubled. That gets you out of position to be healed. You'll adjust your position as you read every day. It puts you in a place to be healed. So the story goes on. I'm going to just speak this story to you and definitely mark this in your word. These enemies came against Jehoshaphat to remove Israel out of their place. Okay, that's why you're fighting a physical battle. The enemy wants to remove you out of the place where God would have you to have your assignment to complete your destiny. That's the, the whole purpose of you fighting a battle with the enemy so that he can displace you. That was the strategy of this, this battle here. They didn't want Israel where Israel was taking their place. So we need to stand our ground, stay in position, and fear not, and not be dismayed. That keeps you in position to receive your healing. Now, if we look at this particular passage in this chapter, we can find some more clues on how to get in position. The word... Uh, gives them precise instructions physically what to do to defeat the enemy. Of course, at the very end of the word, it, it, I, I can just read it to you. It says, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord be with you. 
the beginning when the Lord began to speak to Israel and Jehoshaphat there and the end it's emphasized fear not and when you fear not the Lord is with you um, there's a passage in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 that says um, fear not for the Lord goes into battle before you he goes before you to fight for you what if you fear who's going to get to do the fighting if you do the opposite of what the word says then you get the opposite result you get to do the fighting I can't fight that good and you can't either that's why some of us to this point have not received with God all things are possible with me almost nothing is possible I mean I can do the best I can but until God touches it and we get that supernatural touch that is what we're looking for that's what we're looking for the supernatural touch to get us back in position and you know the main fight here is that you need to get back in place where you need to be your attention get back on the Lord the eyes back on him to receive your healing so that you can fulfill your destiny and that's your assignment as a minister that will minister healing as a main uh, part of your ministry is to help others to get in a position and get their eyes back on the Lord so that their destiny can be fulfilled you see the enemy despises you he really doesn't like you at all so his little job is going to be to get your eyes off of your destiny but more than you he hates your destiny oh he doesn't like you but it's that destiny that he's after you see it's those tens of thousands of souls that'll say Jesus I make you Lord of my life that's what he doesn't want you to do it's all those hugs and God bless you today Jesus loves you it's all that he wants to shut you up it's all those moments of comfort that you brought somebody with a smile that destiny he's after that oh he doesn't like you but he's after your destiny and sometimes it's just getting a focus on that that you can see the bigger picture you know praise the Lord so this was one of the main things I, I wanted to talk to you about concerning your position you know time went on in my ongoing story about that evening um, that I was taken to the hospital in the state of Tennessee if you try to commit suicide you can get arrested for attempted murder if you don't succeed okay well um, I didn't actually get arrested I was taken into custody um, because I wasn't able to take care of myself after the hospital treatment that night to get the poison out of my system so they sent me with a female sergeant uh, to a hotel room until I was well enough to be on my own and the um, officers came back to speak with me um, before they released me the next day until you get yourself in trouble when you get in the wrong position when you get your eyes off this book you could get in trouble well how did I come out of that I tell you it was really 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 simple I know some amazing people in the body of Christ and I started looking to God for help the Lord specifically said to me if you don't get back with me the way you used to be you're not going to reach your destiny you won't be on this earth long so I knew what I had to do I had to start reading again I had to start chasing after God again I had to start really getting my eyes on him if I was going to fulfill the destiny that he had chosen for my life and I did I started reading what I thought was a lot I was reading through four times a year I was reading King James from cover to cover to cover to cover four times a year sometimes five 
but that's at that point all I could manage. And I'm telling you, that was my road uphill. From that day that I was taken home from the hospital and I realized that I had to start reading the Word of God, from that day, it's been an uphill climb. I cannot tell you that there's been beautiful blooming pansies and roses all the way up that hill because there's been some ravines and it felt like I was going to fall off the side of that hill sometimes, but it has been an uphill climb. And as long as you're in this earth, there are going to be battles. But you're going to find the answer right here. You're going to find a way to hold your head high and stand up straight and get through these battles right here. Now, you know in your heart that if at the end of the service you came for prayer and you're at a time in your life that you're in trouble. I believe with all my heart from reading this word and for those of you that are full of the word that there had to be some door somewhere that opened up. Um, you know, you're going to catch a fiery dart here and there. There are going to be battles. But to truly, truly, truly be in trouble and to not know which way to turn and to turn from this person and that person and this person and that person and this person, here's your answer right here. Here's your answer right here. Let's grow up. Let's get the book out. Let's read, read, read. And you will see your trouble diminish. It has to. It absolutely has to. Let's go back to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20. As that story goes on, and Israel followed the instructions, <clears throat> as soon as um, Jehaziel finished his word, and he said, uh, For the Lord will be with you. Uh, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And uh, verse 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, fell before the Lord. Jehoshaphat, king, had his face to the ground. Maybe his robe got dirty. He had to get down there to get his face to the ground. The rest of him went down there too. If he wore a crown, that obviously had to come off for his face to touch the ground. Maybe he'd never worshipped like that before. Maybe there's a place in worship we've never been before. Let's go there today. In your heart, you may need to bow with your face to the ground. You may not need to care. There needs to come a point when the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when you become so bold with your worship with him, that it doesn't matter who's looking at you, who cares, what the proper protocol is. All you want to do is give your all to worship him. My brothers and sisters, that's going to put you in the right position to receive your healing. You will get in the right position if you'll do that. I understand that there are services that the gifts of healing and working of miracles take place. I see that all the time, absolutely all the time. And that's a great way to receive. It's a gift. It doesn't depend on anything. It's a gift. That's great. But you can leave here healed. If you go back out there and smoke, your lungs are going to be a mess again. If you're a smoker and you came because you've got emphysema and you've got asthma and the doctors have said they see a dark spot on your lung and the Lord has mercy on you. He loves you so much. And you're healed. You immediately stop coughing. All the phlegm comes out. Everything's healed. You're, you're healed and you know it. And you go outside and light up a cigarette. You need to put yourself in position you see. So, if you'll remember, uh, I think it was um, 
Sunday morning or Sunday evening, I said to you, um, there is a map to the presence of God. You praise him until the worship comes. And you worship him until the glory comes and you stand in the glory. You don't need music for that. You don't need music for it. You can praise him. You can proclaim who he is to you. That's all praising is, is you call him your healer. You proclaim who he is. You say who God is to you. You're my miracle worker. You're my healer. You proclaim that until the worship comes. Somewhere in that proclaim, proclamation, you're going to lock eyes with him. And you won't want to talk to anybody else or probably even say much except that you love him. In that time of worship, the glory will come. I started to say a uh, while ago that I talked to my little daughter, Holly, yesterday. We were talking about reading the word. And she said, Mama, it goes beyond just reading, Mom. You know that. She said, I, I can be reading my word. I can close the door to my bedroom. And I can close my eyes and just say his name. I could just softly whisper, Hallelujah, hallelujah. And mama, he comes close. It goes beyond. There are layers of getting yourself in the right position. One layer after the next. And you're going to find those layers right here. Right here. Time to grow up. If you need to get your little day timer out and mark, 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there. Fantastic. Let's do it. So Jehoshaphat worshipped God. Maybe like he never had before. And then it says, here, I turned too many pages here. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of of the Korhite stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high and they rose early in the morning and went forth they worshiped him and they praised him and then it tells how the enemy was defeated I dare say to you that if you don't have worship time and praise time on top of your time here getting to know him that you're not truly getting in position there needs to be a time. I mean, um, I can be in Walmart and the cashier say something that something may be half price and I'll just say, praise the Lord. It's okay. I don't care if they think I'm crazy. I think the devil's crazy. I'm just in position, praise God, and I want to stay there. I want to stay there. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I, I want to tell you something about that, about protocol and being polite. And, oh, well, I'm not around Christians all the time. I have a friend who um, owns a violin shop. And I'm around a lot of Christians. And I go to the city where his violin shop is. And sometimes we, we, we might meet some friends of mine. I always encourage my Christian friends to come. Because the first thing that my friend says when we're around and we say praise the Lord is I'm not Christian. He's very proud of the fact that he's not Christian. And, um, but he's watching. He's been watching for a lot of years. And I still say hallelujah and praise the Lord. And I don't mind to tell him. Um, the next time I see him, I'll tell him your testimonies. You are not going to believe what happened this last time I taught this class. I'm teaching a class and, you know, one of these days, one of these days, the thing that didn't seem like the right protocol around somebody that was not a Christian is going to work. It's going to work. His, his word does not return void. That's just that. Two plus two is four. That's it. Nothing else. His word does not return void. So go ahead. Get full of the word. Let it come out of your mouth. Let it come out of your eyes. Let it come out in a smile. Praise God. But get in a position to be healed. 
well, the end of this story in Jehoshaphat chapter 20 is that the enemy defeated itself. Israel didn't have to fight. And it took a long time for Israel to even take all the gold and silver and everything that was left over from the enemy because they just ran off and left it laying in the field. Then those people that ran told everybody what an amazing God Israel had. And Israel was in a great position to live victoriously. And um, there, there's a verse here that's, that's really beautiful. And it's, let me see, more than they could carry away when they returned to Jerusalem. Here it is. And it says, so here it is. I love it. Verse 30. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. Why did that happen? Because Jehoshaphat got his eyes on God, he worshipped God, he praised God, and he didn't fear. So the Lord could go before him and fight. He put one layer on top of the next layer, on top of the next layer, on top of the next one. And the word of God did not return void. This book works. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Sometimes we just have to get it. Now, I, I believe yesterday I explained all the different um, types of healing. We talked about natural healing, medical healing, calling for the elders of the church, um, being healed by faith, proclaiming your healing, the gifts of healing and working of miracles, and the gift of faith is different than being healed by faith. The gift of faith, uh, for the most part, is the person that's ministering to you, operating in that gift. So, um, these are ways that once you're in position, now there, in my heart, I see a different position, and this will come, sometimes your position is going to be different than mine to receive your healing. And we may need to be healed of the same thing, but your path may be a different path, and the layers of healing for your life and obedience may be different. Maybe this morning, you just may need to be coming to the altar and getting on your knees. That might be your path. You may never have anyone lay hands on you. Others, maybe the Lord would use someone to lay hands on you. Others, maybe the Lord would use a note. So I'm just saying, if you read this book, find your path, get to know him, and be confident that this word works. It works. We saw a demonstration of the Spirit yesterday. I'm believing that direction from the Lord today. I'm glad to join my faith with you today um, for ministry of the word. I, I want to encourage you just a little bit more before we start individual ministry. But um, when you think about battles in the Old Testament like we just talked about, I always go back to a very well-known battle of David and Goliath. And I love what I heard someone say once. If Goliath had been a midget, we might not know that story. It wouldn't have been a big deal at all, at all. This minister looked at the word and looked at battles and made this statement. You can measure your destiny by the size of your enemy. Well, that's encouraging. That's encouraging. But you can know that all day long and know that you're in a big battle and be encouraged that you have an, a wonderful destiny. But how do I get healed? 
You know, it, it's nice to hear those words. Sister, thus saith the Lord. You're anointed. That's why you're sick. Because the devil doesn't want you to be anointed. Well, sure, the devil doesn't like anybody that's... He doesn't like anybody that's not saved. Much less somebody that has Jesus in their heart. You know, but what I'm saying to you is the word of God and Jesus, you're paid for. It's done. It's already done. It came in the package when he went to the cross. It came in the package that Mary held in her arms in the manger. That's your healing. It's in him. It's in Jesus. And just like when you were in the first or second grade and your little mind heard two plus two is four, we're going to take two of these and we're going to add two of these. And how many do we have all together? We have four. There was a day that it clicked for you. Ah, <gasps> four. Two plus two. Ah, <gasps> one plus three. Four. There was a day it clicked. Healing's here. Get it. A day will come and you'll get it. Just add the layers. There's layers. I'm sure there may be some layers that we won't discuss. We probably don't have time in uh, our three sessions to discuss all the layers, but I hope that the Lord will help us to find all the foundational layers so that you can get a start and find the rest of the layers as you follow your path to be healed. And yes, I absolutely positive believe that healing is available and done, done deal, done, paid for, for everyone. For everyone. No doubt about it. Now, you can come and tell me about a situation after class today that you don't understand. I'm not saying I know everything, and I'm not saying I understand everything. But I am telling you that I believe I know what the Word of God says about your healing. And I believe it's available for all of you. It's your choice if you don't want to believe. You can be in any position you want to. But I put myself in a position to say, with God, all things are possible. I will never, the Lord help my mouth, never to give glory to the enemy in anything. The Lord help me vocally and mentally. And this is where this comes in every day. Because when you read every day, you know, you can make it dry if you want to and just read, read, read and not ever do anything or even think about it. I think personally that would be hard. I do believe that would be hard. I know some people, and I'm not going to say who it is because we're, um, uh, we're going to have this message go out to thousands of people. But I know some people that made a promise to Jesus that for the rest of their lives they would not even sleep more than three hours but they would read their Bibles and pray at least every three hours and I personally until I met them thought they were dry they didn't really know God like I knew him and wow is that another subject be humble be careful not to judge. If people are not your exact faith or religion or denomination, don't look down on them. Don't look down on them. Well, I found that these people are amazing worshipers, beautiful worshipers with a strong presence of God when I came face to face with these people. I had only read about them. I thought ritual, that's all. Poor things. 
they really need God. Poor me. I don't know anything about committing to God like that, to never leaving a piece of property, to pray and read my Bible for the rest of my life, to put everything down. I don't know how to commit like that. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to be more committed. Be humble. Don't judge others. That's another layer in positioning yourself to not be judgmental. But you know what? I don't even have to bring all the subjects up if you'll just put yourself in a position for some blocked off time every day and read your word and do it. And you don't have to have this method of printing. You don't have to. Just read your Bible. Get the message. Get the living Bible. Get something you can understand if you don't understand King James. And read, read, read. That will put you in a position to be healed. 